And to all of my colleagues and to all of the advocates, thank you for your courage and your bravery. Um, because we are all grieving at the profound loss of life that has occurred over the past 10 days. At least 2,700 Palestinians, 1,400 Israelis, and many Americans have been killed. Tens of thousands of people have been injured. Nearly 200 Israelis are being held hostage. Families have been destroyed and Israelis and Palestinians, Jews and Muslims are facing unimaginable trauma as they navigate this horrific moment. Adding to the crisis, the Israeli government has cut off electricity, food, fuel, internet, and up until yesterday, clean drinking water to Gaza. It has bombed neighborhoods and civilian infrastructure. It has ordered 1.1 million people, including those who are children, elderly, sick, injured, uh, disabled, and pregnant to leave their homes in Northern Gaza and then bombed them as they evacuated. Let, let me be clear. The collective punishment of Palestinians in Gaza is a war crime. With a full-scale invasion of Gaza likely imminent, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of lives hang in the balance. And it's not only happening right before our eyes, it's happening with the support and the power of the United States government, and it is shameful. In addition to sharing my grief and sorrow, I want to affirm my strong belief that all, meaning all, all human life is equally precious, a, be a belief that above all else, we must save lives. We must lead with love and solidarity. We must fight against violence and human suffering. As a pastor, I'm reminded in this moment of Matthew 5 and 9, which says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This biblical call to facilitate reconciliation, not violence, could not be any clearer to me. And I think about another scripture in 1 Peter, let him issue evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. And this responsibility of peacemaking is not conditional. Mm -mm. It's universal. My beliefs are rooted in my experiences as an activist in the movement to save Black lives, where every day I marched and protested on the front lines in Ferguson, frequently joined by my Jewish and Palestinian siblings, one who is on the call right now, Sandra Tamari, demanding an end to the violence, the brutality, and the oppression that is killing Black people in America. My commitment to ending violence, brutality, and oppression is not conditional. It's universal. My beliefs are so rooted in my experiences as a Congresswoman. My commitment to the people of Missouri's first district has always been to do the absolute most to save lives, starting with those with the greatest need. Over the past week, many of my constituents have called my office, leaving anguished voicemails urging me urging all of us in Congress to stop a humanitarian a catastrophe in Palestine and Israel right now. One of the constituent voicemails that played over and over in my head is from a woman who said, quote, I'm calling as a Jewish person, even though I know it's probably futile, I urge you to continue to advocate for a ceasefire and to advocate for the lives of Gazans. She then began to weep and weep and hung up in tears. Our empathy and solidarity cannot be conditional. It must be universal. This is why I'm so proud to be leading this resolution alongside my extraordinary and courageous colleagues today because I promised to save lives, because I see the shared struggles between the people of Ferguson and the people of Palestine, between the people in St. Louis and the people in Israel, because I preach the notability of peace, because I'm against human rights violation wherever they occur, because I'm against state-sanctioned violence wherever it happens. 
because I want equality, justice, safety, and dignity for everyone. And because I have love for the Israeli and, Israeli and Palestinian people who are suffering because of this violence and the inability of our governments to resolve the root causes of systemic oppression, military occupation, and the crimes of apartheid. And look, you don't have to be a pastor or an activist or a congressperson to understand the value of human life. You only need to be willing to choose the tougher course, the tougher course of love and peace over the easier course of hatred and violence. You must allow yourself to be consistent in your love and your respect for humanity. You must not let yourself turn a blind eye to the mass murder of Palestinians, even as we strongly condemn Hamas for its appalling attack against Israelis last weekend. Together, we must work to end the violence in the short and the long term. Violence we know will never bring us peace. Violence leads to more violence. Together, we must be bold. We must stand on the side of humanity. We must stand on the side of justice. We must stand on the side of equality. We must stand on the side of self-determination. We must stand on the side of love. We must stand on the side of safety. We must stand on the side of peace. And we must be willing to speak out against war and violence and against our government's complicity in it. In this moment, ask yourselves, are you for war or against war? Are you for saving lives or against saving lives? The time to decide is now because we need a ceasefire now. We need peace now, the United States government has a responsibility to use every, every diplomatic tool we have to demand and mediate de-escalation, the safe return of hostage, hostages and accountability for all perpetrators who dare violate international human rights law. And you know, Dr. King, he once denounced, he was once denounced for speaking out, daring to speak out against the Vietnam War. And he said, and I quote, we are called to speak for the weak for the voiceless, for the victims of our nation, and for those it calls enemy. For no document from human hands can make these humans any less our brothers. To my colleagues in Congress, I urge you to choose humanity, choose peace, choose love, choose courage, and join this resolution now. I'm so grateful to my colleagues and advocates and faith leaders, organizers and affected people and families who are supporting this effort. Know that we will not back down until there is peace. We need a ceasefire now. Thank you.